business and being a boss. This is my dream, and now is the time to step into my destiny. I'm Kyla, and this is my corner. Good evening, and welcome to Kyla's Corner. I'm Kyla, and this is my corner. As you all can see, I am back from my lovely break that I had for my birthday. I dyed my hair. That was my 21st birthday gift to myself. And now I'm back in the studio with you all for a few more episodes. So in segment one, we are going to talk about what is next for Kyla's Corner. So this is episode 12 and this season is coming to an end as they say seasons come and seasons go and we're almost finished with season one of Kyla's Corner. I know you all can't believe it because I can't. This was a, a dream that came into fruition and you know I'm just continuing to roll with the punches and go with it and I'm very excited that you all have come along this journey with me. This is something that's still very new. I'm trying to get you know my viewers and my following up of course as any other YouTuber would or blogger, vlogger, whatever you may call it, as I call myself a talk show host, you know, so continue to share, like, comment with your friends, tell them about the show. This is something, you know, that's still very, very, very new, but, you know, we're all going through this journey together. I will be having a wrap up episode coming soon, just wrapping up the entire season, you know, just taking you through every episode and, you know, things like that. So look out for that. I will be giving you all some updates on what is coming soon from Kyla and what I will be doing this summer, what I'll be doing next school year and my future plans as well. Because like I said, you guys, you know, you guys are going to stay up to date with me as I will stay up to date with you. I will be finishing the season at the end of the school year and the school year is almost ending, but I will have probably a couple little bonus episodes here and there in the summer, maybe some video diaries just so you guys can stay updated with what I'm doing over the summer as well. So definitely stay tuned for that. Keep your subscriptions up because you just never know when you'll get that little notification from Kyla's Corner. And also, um, I will be continuing to blog. So I haven't kept up my blog in a while just because I've been so focused on Kyla's Corner. But please subscribe to the Dream Diaries. It's the dreamdiaries.wordpress.com. Please subscribe to that. I will be coming back better than ever with my blog as well. So you get to read my writing. You get to see me on the camera, in front of the camera, behind the camera, all that good stuff. So stay tuned for that as well. And when we come back, we will talk about the great college debate. Stay tuned. Oh, not my mom's calling me. First of all, I should be in class right now. So how is she calling me? Hello. Hey. Hey. I'm, I'm, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna call you back cuz I'm recording. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, okay. All right. Ciao. She said he shouldn't have answered. And that, everyone, is my loving mother, Mrs. Wright. <laughs> and welcome back to Kyla's Corner. And now we will talk about the great college debate. So first things first, decision day is coming up. And it's time for all those high school seniors out there to make their decision about what university they're going to attend in the fall. One of the biggest decisions that you will make because this is somewhere that you will possibly spend the next four years of your life. Though a lot of people do transfer in and transfer out, this is what you are perspective to be for the next four years. I made my decision to come to my university for four years straight. I made it through my, well, three years. I have my last year next year. And you know, everyone else has to go through the same thing as well. So, it's always the decision or the debate that people always go through, HBCU versus PWI, and it's always a big debate on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and every other social network and in person and just 
overall, it's always just been a big argument for probably since the, the inception of HBCUs, honestly, or the inception of universities, because people think that HBCUs are only pro-black, so pro-black must mean anti-white and things of that nature, but that's really not what it is. It's not the case whatsoever. We all know that I attend an HBCU, and I'm nowhere near anti-white. Of course, I am very pro-black, pro but that doesn't mean that I have to be anti-something else as well. I am just, you know, I'm a little biased about the you know, HBCU PWI debate just because I wanted to go to a university that catered toward me and my needs because this was something created by us, for us, and that's it. So we weren't allowed to go to PWIs at first. We weren't allowed to read and write when we were slaves, so we decided to create our own institutions so that we can be educated African Americans. The rich history that is behind HBCUs, I feel like it's unmatched. So I'm a little biased. I'm sorry, not that sorry. But I just really, I appreciate them. And you know, every university has their flaws. We do, PWIs do, and you can't do anything about that because no one nor nothing is perfect. But please understand that my children, my nieces and nephews, my anyone else who I can get my grasp around will be attending an HBCU because I just feel like that's what we deserve, honestly. So stay tuned for class of what, 20, like 20, 30 something. That'll be like my nieces and nephews and my children at their prospective HBCUs. I don't really care which one they go to. They just have to go to a black college because I just love my black colleges. It's nothing like black excellence and that is that. But even though I'm biased and you know it's all in love and care for some people, some people take it very seriously and get into serious arguments about why you shouldn't go to HBCUs or why you should go to PWIs or why you shouldn't go to PWIs. And it's very draining. And honestly, at the end of the day, if you are getting your education, that's all that matters because I'd rather you get your piece of paper from a PWI or from an HBCU or from a community college than you not have one at all because what's educated over not educated. When I was in high school, it was the prime to go to University of Michigan or to go to Michigan State University or any of the other universities in or around Michigan because of course I'm from Michigan. But I always noticed my senior year in high school when students would get their acceptance letters to U of M and Michigan State or even the Bowling Greens, Ohio State or the Purdue's and you know the list can go on with the PWIs. Teachers would be so ecstatic and excited about them going to those universities. And then it would be myself and my other classmates who said they were going to Howard and Spelman, Hampton, Tennessee State, and all those schools. And they'd be like, oh, a black college? Really? And I would be like, yeah, really, a black college. Why not? And I was always really offended, and I'm still very offended when I get that type of reaction just because one, you should be happy that I'm attending a university and that I'm furthering my education. Two, black colleges are for us. But people think that because black colleges are majority African American that we only think that there are black people in the world. Let us stop for a second. If I'm spending $40,000 a year for the next four years, so that's four, eight, 12, 16, $160,000 at minimum, on my education, I hope that I don't think that there are only black people on this earth because one, that's a waste of my money, a waste of my education, and a waste of common sense. And I know that all sense isn't common, but come on now. Really, like, there are only black And the thing is, even, and no offense, no offense whatsoever to any of my counterparts who attend PWIs, but most people go to PWIs and they join the Black Student Union and they hang out with all black people all day. So what's the difference between hanging out with all black people at a non-black university or going to a black university and hanging out with black people. But besides that, HBCUs are so diverse, like, so, like, and I mean diversity on a level of, we don't only have black people who attend our universities, we have black people who attend our universities who look nothing like me, who talk nothing like me. My slang, my dialect, my tone, my everything has changed so much in my three years of being at a black college. There are international students that are black who I didn't, I didn't know that there were black people from Italy and Spain and Europe, like 
I mean, London. And so there are people who look like me who literally know nothing about Detroit, where I'm from. I know nothing about where they're from in, in Spain. Or So we still learn so much from each other, from the international students to the students who are from Atlanta. It's so much about Georgia I didn't know. And then you take somebody who's from Atlanta, somebody who's from Texas, somebody who's from Michigan, California, and New York, and you put them all together, you will have such a diverse conversation because it's so much food that they have that we don't have, or the way that they talk, or their slang, or their accent. People tell me that I have an accent, and it's so much. So let us just break the barriers of the fact that black colleges aren't diverse, because I will tell you that is the furthest thing from the truth. I don't know what is. So let us appreciate our black colleges. Let us appreciate our PWIs, because at the end of the day, if black people are getting educated, we're taking a step in the right direction. So please understand that. Please appreciate that. Love that. Get your education. Make that decision that you need to make and understand that you are good enough to go wherever you think you're good enough to go. So don't make, let anyone make that decision for you. You make that decision for yourself because that is the next four years for you and not for anyone else. And when we come back, we will have Kyla's closing thoughts. Stay tuned. Actually, I'm just going to throw this in here too. Side note. I was a part of an organization when I was a senior in high school, actually from freshman year, I think, to like senior year. And I said, you know, I made my decision. I'm going to a black college, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Everyone was, okay, good job, great, everything. There was a parent who was in the room who came up to me afterwards and said, I think you're better than that. You're better than going to a black college. You don't need to surround yourself with black people. You need to, you need to actually get some experience in the world. You need to be surrounded by more, you know, people who don't look like you. And you you can, you have the, the capability of going to, you know, a Harvard or a Stanford. And I was extremely, extremely offended by this comment because she felt she was complimenting me, but I was so insulted because why can't Spelman or Hampton or Howard why can't we, which we are, be the Black Ivies? We are literally the Black Ivy League. So why are you trying to tell me that I have to go to an Ivy, a regular Ivy, instead of going to the Black Harvard? What's the difference? So my message to the people who are biased or who want to send the message to young people telling them that they are better than going to black colleges, please refrain from it or please refrain from saying that to me or anywhere near me because you won't get a good reaction out of me with that because it's it's just beyond offensive it's offensive to the foundation that our universities were built on and to our forefathers who broke their backs Booker T Washington walked so he could go to his university walked so he could build Tuskegee so please don't ever say like learn the history before you actually criticize so please educate yourself and don't be ignorant about this topic before you place judgment on someone else. And now we will talk about my closing thoughts. So very short, sweet, and to the point. Do you follow your dreams, whatever you want to do, wherever you want to go. Don't steer away from it because of your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, whoever. Don't let someone tell you you can or cannot be what you want to be. Do what you want to do or go where you want to go. Because at the end of the day, you yourself will build an infinite amount of possibilities for yourself and you create your own destiny and no one else can do that for you so no, never ever ever forget that don't don't steer away from your goals just keep your eye on the prize and I promise it will pay off that that is that and your Kyla's closing quote of the day is God is putting an expiration date on your struggle this too shall pass unknown but it's just something that I saw on the internet and I thought it it was great your closing scripture of the day is from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed to the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Don't forget to keep your eye on the prize. Do you stay strong and always remember, God got you. Until next time. Thank you for watching Kyla's Corner. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.